In this interview, I sat down with Doug Lane, President and CEO of Capgemini Government Solutions, the government contracting arm of multinational IT services and consulting firm Capgemini. Doug has been in the IT management and consulting space for over 35 years, and he's a 2022 WASH 100 award winner. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a question for the leaders of GovCon, please drop a comment below or email studio at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Myatt, and here to speak with me today is Doug Lane, President and CEO of Capgemini Government Solutions. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Summer, thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. So, Doug, at the end of last year, you acquired VaraQ and Empire Limited. Can you tell me what that integration process has been like and what benefits are you seeing from that? Well, the motivation for VaraQ was pretty simple. They had uh, a few contracts that we did not have access to, notably an Alliance 2 full and open vehicle uh, and, and some others that were attractive to us that we thought would enable us to accelerate growth in our business. Uh, they had a few programs with clients that we had not uh, done a lot of work with in the past, which we thought would be helpful as well. And obviously they have um, some very good people that have complementary skills to our workforce. So the way we looked at it was that um, our integration activities would be around trying to accelerate those positives in the business as quickly as we could. So we worked very hard to get most of the integration accomplished by the end of Q1 which we did, so the legacy VARQ people are on our systems, processes, payroll, benefits, and more importantly, they're incorporated into our processes for delivery and for business development. So as we've been working through the summer sales season, we've been working with one pipeline, going to market as one entity. Uh, I think it's that the results are gonna be very positive this year and for some time to come, and I'm very pleased with the work that the team's done to get us to where we are today. Well, congratulations on the integration. Yeah, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about your growth opportunities and strategies in the federal landscape? Are there any new markets or capabilities you're looking to tap into in the coming year? Well, our general approach is pretty simple, is that we try to do things that we're good at for, with clients that know us well and trust us. So in that vein, we're looking to build out our account structures. So we're looking for adjacencies to expand in agencies and to bring more of the portfolio in. So that's a core part of our, our expansion strategy. And then to get new logos in the game, we typically invest in seniors, which we've done over the last year. We've invested in some seniors to help us in defense, in health, uh, and in treasury, uh, financial generally. Uh, and so we've been working through that process. We ha have some expansion there. And then in terms of capabilities, again, there's always newer things we're doing to expand. We're seeing more opportunities with cloud, more with digital. We're starting to see some AI opportunities. Uh, so we're starting to see some new things in the market. But that, that in general is our strategy is to take and work off of our base and expand. Can you talk a little bit about the emerging technologies that you feel might have the most impact in the federal landscape? Well, one is quantum. Quantum, for sure, is uh, an opportunity area that we see for clients. Now, where there's a very interesting paper, if you go to capgemini.com, you'll see a research paper that was recently published that will provide uh, a deeper, more robust answer to your question. But there's no doubt in defense civilian agencies, there's lots of applicability for quantum. Although it's accelerating quickly, it's still relatively early uh, in its development, but our, our experts are recommending to clients to get into the game, identify some pilots that you think make sense in the short to midterm, dedicate some small teams to working those issues, partner with the technology firms that are going to be driving this, and get it as part of the budget process, because although it may not be commercially viable today, it will be in the near term, and the paybacks could be significant. So that is an example of some things we're seeing. Doug, going back to quantum, you mentioned that we're seeing the possibility of commercial capabilities, but we're not quite there yet. How do you see the U.S. harnessing quantum in the future, and what role does Capgemini Government Solutions play in that vision? Well, I think you're going to see things hit um, in certain segments earlier. I think that certainly within networks, sensors, cyber is probably going to be the initial uh, place where we're going to see 
commercially viable alternatives. I think for things longer term around AI and things like that, I think they're going to be a little further out. Again, it's a fast moving market. We have research teams that are working this uh, internally and also with our clients. I think you just have to be in the game and testing these things. Things are evolving very quickly uh, and you want to be in the game. You want to be in the game so that you can take advantage of them more quickly. Time to market is going to be key. And as a federal contractor, how do you ensure your team follows U.S. acquisition policies and procedures while integrating commercial capabilities and technologies, all while ensuring that you're not sacrificing on quality? Well, there's no doubt that the federal government's been asking more and more for commercial capabilities. And it makes sense because newer things, whether they're newer technologies or newer approaches, are typically um, accomplished in large commercial organizations before the federal government gets to it. So gaining that expertise is important. The challenge is that the federal acquisition process makes it difficult to include these things. I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. Is that we've seen... Uh, large GWAC bids um, recently where they will uh, allow commercial capabilities to be included, but you have to complete a PPQ, a, a past performance questionnaire. That's quite detailed. Commercial clients typically are not excited about disclosing things that are really innovative and new publicly to the government. It is not a very good process to be able to get the references included. Um, secondly, we've seen uh, on similar procurements where government asked for new innovative commercial capabilities, but they put size thresholds on it. And the size thresholds are enormous, you know, 50, $100 million. And commercial clients don't buy innovative services that way. They try in, in very small bits and pieces. So those are just examples of uh, some challenges. It's really is just a question of acquisition reform. The federal government's been working this. They need to continue to work it. Uh, so that they can gain access to things that are very useful and very needed to them, but they have to change some of the processes to get them uh, get them on board. If you could enact changes to acquisition policies that would make the most impact for your business right now, what would they be? I think the best thing the government could do would be to think through how to get new entrants into the market. We have a very solid defense industrial base here. But it is very hard for, for people to enter. It's easier to enter as a small business, but there are a number of large organizations that have a very modest federal footprint and the barriers to entry are significant. So I would suggest that they put together an acquisition team across government to look at the issues, talk with industry, spend some time to thoughtfully come up with a couple of modest changes that could make it easier for new entrants to get in. I think that would be in the better interest of the government. Uh, and I think it would be improve the competitive landscape in the contractor community. And Doug, what advice would you give to executives looking to advance their careers in today's highly competitive market? There's a number of obvious things that, that you would do around uh, developing your own personal skill set and working with clients. But I, I would suggest the concept of networking and more than just networking within your team and within your client organization, typically as you become more senior uh, in, in your consulting organization, uh, the activities you're going to go after, large activities for clients require multi-skilled teams. You're going to have to have a network with your peers across the organization, your uh, peers and seniors in the organization. And then as you get to more senior positions, again, uh, a number of these big programs that we do require cooperation from a number of firms to be able to provide what the government needs. You need to have a network with your peers across uh, the federal contracting community. I myself spend, uh, a, I would not say significant, but a good portion of my time uh, working with groups like the Professional Services Council, attending things like the Potomac Officers Club events, ways that I can connect with my peers in industry so that when we have an opportunity to work together, it's not the first time we've spoken. So I would say networking is key to developing one's career in this market. Well, Doug, thank you so much for your insights today and for all the work you do at Capgemini Government Solutions. Summer, again, I appreciate the time. It was a good conversation. We love working with you guys, uh, and we look forward to doing more in the future.